All right, moving right along with our Child's Play Chucky uh, series review, we are now on to Child's Play 2. And for the last review, uh, for the original Child's Play, I showed off my Scream Factory Blu-ray. Um, but I also have this, Chucky the Complete Collection. This comes with the first three Child's Play movies, and then has Bride of Chucky, Seed of Chucky, and Curse of Chucky. And Child's Play 2, which came out two years after the original Child's Play, is, to me the only Chucky sequel that is thoroughly enjoyable. Um, this is the only one, everything after this kind of falls apart for me. Um, and that's not accounting for Curse of Chucky because I have not seen Curse of Chucky yet and I heard pretty decent things about it so I am excited to get to that one. But for right now, uh, Child's Play 2 is the last real, real enjoyable one. Um, not as good as the first one, of course. Um, it has its problems, but it also does have its moments. Um, what I do like about this movie is that it kind of picks pretty much right up after the original Child's Play. Now, what I said in my last review about how sequels become illogical in um, horror movies, that definitely does apply here to some degree. You do see some illogical things happening and rules are kind of murkier now. It's not really making as much sense. Um, what I really dislike about um, the Chucky movies is that there is no effort to an explanation of how the doll does come back. Um, now with Freddy Krueger, um, he's a dream character, so you know you do, he could come back because he, he's in dreams, right? Um, with Jason and Michael Myers, they're kind of the embodiment of evil. They're like these kind of evil beings, so it doesn't you know you don't really have to explain away, but. Chucky, he's like a doll that was has a soul of a serial killer in him, but they said that once you blow up the heart, he's dead. So how does he come back from that? They don't really go out of their way to explain very logically. Um, they, the best shot that they do here is the first scene in Child's Play 2. They're trying to put the doll back together from the end of Child's Play 1 because the people who are in charge of the good guy dolls, they're trying to figure out what went wrong. They think that maybe somebody who made the doll like program these voices into it because they don't buy a story that it was a serial killer soul in there so they're saying maybe you know somebody programmed these um, evil voices uh, into the doll and when they put the doll back together lightning strikes and Charles Lee Ray is resurrected inside the Chucky doll it really doesn't make too much sense but at least it's an effort unlike Charles Play 3 which doesn't even try and going along with that we get um, in the beginning of the movie we find out that Andy Barclay is in a social services center now and his mom has been placed in a psychiatric uh, hospital because nobody believes her about the story that the doll was human um, and the cops who were from the first child's play are keeping silent about the whole thing because they don't want this story to break out which doesn't really make sense to me why they would want to keep this on the down low like this it's not it's not about like police corruption or anything it's Revealing this story isn't gonna like show the cops in a bad light or damage their image So why would they cover up this story? It doesn't really make sense All they're doing by doing this is sending an in innocent person to a psychiatric hospital and an innocent child into a social services center without parents So it just seemed like really a half-assed um, uh, A half-assed way of writing off Andy's mom's character because I guess the actress didn't want to do the movie so that was another illogical thing for me but besides things like that I really do enjoy this movie there are a lot of great scenes and um, moments that stuck with me as a kid watching this movie this was another movie that I watched a lot uh, as a child and I really like the fact that we're picking up um, with uh, young Andy still still played by the same actor Alex Vincent like this is only I don't know how long it takes place story-wise but like I said it's two years uh, it, it came out two years after the original Child's Play, so it's picking up pretty much around the same time. He's still still a little boy, and that's what I like about this. Um, with Child's Play 3, we get Andy when he's like 16, and I don't know, I'm just not into that. I prefer more of like following more closely to the original Child's Play to seeing like what happens to Andy immediately after, rather than the Child's Play 3 where it skips eight years. I, but we'll talk about that for the Child's Play 3 review, but I like this whole thing where he's in a foster center, then he's adopted um, by this couple who has another foster child. Um, it kind of reminds me of Halloween 4 and 5 with um, the Jamie character, Jamie Lee Curtis's daughter, um, who goes, through, uh, goes to a foster house. It kind of reminds me of that whole vibe of like, 
you know, she had a sibling kind of, and Andy has a foster sibling too. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of, um, cool, good segments in here, like, uh, Andy's teacher, um, in school, she's like, she's calling out Andy because he's acting out. Um, and then she's looking at all the uh, homework papers and then Andy's homework assignment is says, fuck you, bitch. Obviously, Chucky wrote that to get Andy in trouble. And then uh, Miss Kettlewell, the teacher's name, she has Andy in uh, detention pretty much. And then um, leaves him alone in the room with uh, Chucky. Andy escapes and ends up killing Mrs. Kettlewell. I love that scene. That's a scene that stuck with me for since I was a child. And um, my favorite part of this whole movie is um, the climax. This is my favorite climax of any of the child's play Chucky movies um, where they end up at the, uh, the the factory building of the good guys toys. Um, just to me is iconic. Um, I remember it so much. Uh, I love them like Aunt Alex and uh, his foster sister. I think her name was Kyle fighting on the assembly line of the toys. It's just so kind of imaginative and fun. Um, you have this this little part where uh, this machine that puts the eyes into the dolls, it like pokes them into the uh, eyes of the dolls and Andy and Kyle are trying to get past this machine like before it like stabs the two eyes into their body and eventually there is a worker there that gets two uh, doll eyes implanted into his eyes, which is an awesome kill. Um, yeah, so this uh, movie has a lot of iconic kind of scenes for me like that that I just really do um, remember as a child um, there's good stuff with that uh, there's another good guy doll at Andy's house at Foster house in the beginning his name is Tommy and Chucky kills Tommy and buries him and he tries to pass off as Tommy with, so that he could you know infiltrate Andy's house and he buries the Tommy doll and Kyle's on the swings and each time she uh, uh, um, you know gains traction with her feet on the dirt it like removes the dirt and you see uh the tommy doll's broken face and she realizes that chucky's a lot so it has a lot of neat little moments like that um and i just really do like the feel and the tone of this movie um it doesn't click as much as the original child's play um chucky of course is a little more overused in here what i loved about the first one is how they really held uh chucky off they didn't even re you know show off his Brad Dourif voice until like 45 minutes to an hour in the movie here he's pretty much a couple scenes in doing his thing um but this is a sequel we know that we know how Chucky sounds so um you're gonna you're gonna get the Chucky character earlier but I prefer it more in the Child's Play version this is also I said that Child's Play wasn't scary but it was more of a horror vibe really than this um, but yeah, I just think that this has some pretty cool set pieces, some pretty cool, neat ideas. Um, some of the acting is with all these movies are eh, like, um, the Andy's, uh, foster dad is just an asshole for no reason at all. Like, why are you adopting foster kids if you don't like these foster kids that don't trust them? Like he's very dismissive of Andy and always accusing him of things. Um, so some of the characters and writing really doesn't make sense, but all in all, it is a very enjoyable sequel like i said the last enjoyable uh child's play sequel or chucky sequel to me um, i'm gonna give this one a seven out of ten works as a horror sequel um but after this it definitely does fall down and fall down fast child's play 3 is a piece of trash and we will get into that um in our next video anyways i hope you're enjoying this series i'm hope you're enjoying that i'm back on youtube doing movie reviews um We'll be back with Child's Play 3. As always, I'm the voice of movies, and I'll see you later.